गुड इवनिंग आचार्य जी आई एम सुमित भूषण पंडा ऑफ ट्रिपल आई टी भुवनेश्वर फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट एट आई टी ब्रांच इट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर मी हैविंग अ कॉन्वर्सेशन विथ यू माई क्वेश्चन इज दैट नाउ डेज आई है अमंग द यूथ एंड विथ माई सेल्फ टू डेट आर अटेंशन स्पैन इज डिक्रीजिंग डे बाई डे द मेजर इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दिस कैन बी सीन इन स्पोर्ट्स स्टडीज रीडिंग अ बुक और इवन मेयरली वॉचिंग अ डॉक्यूमेंट्री वि टेंड टू discontinue the task which we have started in the middle or even at the start uh, without having any motivation to end it so uh, uh so should we need me for better attention man see two things are uh, simultaneously at work hmm? one the stuff that uh, you are with the object you are attending to is usually not worth it this is the first thing secondly there is an explosion in the number of objects that are potentially available to you to attend to now put these two together and see what you get hmm? who are you you are an unfulfilled mind you are someone who wants to be with something the mind wants to be with an object so that it can feel at peace so that it can feel immersed fulfilled right now today you have 2000 objects in front of you and all these objects are competing with each other to have your attention Hmm? and none of these objects is particularly worthy of your attention this is a characteristic of our age there is just too much to be had and too little that is worthy of being had so obviously the consequence will be that you will go to one thing and not stay with it for long because that thing is just not worth it and equally there is something else just next to that thing very easily available at the click of a button vying for your attention and that explains the very short attention spans we witness these days in fact i do not take it in itself as something worrisome why should you attend to an unworthy thing for long it is good that your mind starts feeling bored or disinterested you say i do not want to be with it any longer i'm dropping it i want something else to go to and then you rush to the next thing and the story repeats and then the next thing and so on and so forth the mind is a hungry thing it is searching for the right food unfortunately our times our surroundings our age all the technology is presenting it with a lot with a lot that is just not uh, worthy of being ingested hmm? 
whenever you will come to something that is actually beautiful, that is actually big enough to captivate you, you will find you have become helpless. You will find yourself incapable of moving on. That thing will arrest you. It's just that our current milieu bars us from coming to things that are really beautiful. We are surrounded by an ocean of ugliness. You can have ugly one, ugly two, you three, you four, till you infinity. So ostensibly you have a lot of choices, an infinite number of choices you have, but those choices are not really different from each other. All those options have something in common. Ugliness is the commonality. And who wants to be with something that is unworthy, ugly, repulsive? Hmm? But look at the prevailing rhetoric. We do not accept that the options given to us are all valueless. Instead, we take the short attention span as the problem. The short attention span is not really the problem. It is not even a symptom. It is actually your savior. It is preventing you from getting absorbed and lost in something unworthy. Now, is that not a good thing if something prevents you from being held captive at an unworthy place? Would you rather want that you stay for very long with something very bizarre, absurd, hollow, even deceptive? The, the hunger, the thirst of the mind is real. And it seeks a real solution, therefore. You cannot fool the mind for long. You cannot keep serving it nonsense and hope that it would oblige you with a satisfied look. You can, uh, yes, obviously, deceive the mind for a while. We all do that. You can deceive the mind through entertainment, through sloth, through a lot of sleep, through laziness, through some cheap kind of titillation. Hmm? You can humor the mind for a while. And for a while the mind can be kind of drugged. And you will feel as if the mind's hunger has come to an end. No, it has not come to an end. The mind will cry aloud again very soon. Because as we said, 
Its hunger is real and it seeks a real solution. The thing wants to fly away. You cannot keep handing it toy rockets. It needs a real Airbus. It wants to actually fly away. We are adults only in name. We keep treating ourselves as kids. Else why would we toy with our own life? And all these things are just toys you have accorded yourself. The products of technology, the avenues for entertainment, TV, radio, the theater, the mobile phone, the entire expanse of social media, relationships, jobs, money, sports. What are these? We kid ourselves. We kid ourselves. <clears throat> and then we feel surprised. Why our attempts at kidding ourselves don't succeed? Because within you sits an adult with a very adult demand. That adult does not want toys. He wants the real deal, the authentic thing. Now tell me, is there anything authentic in the average life, in the usual day? How is it surprising then that uh, nothing really appeals to you? That you don't find anything worthy of, let's come to that word, love. And except for love, what is it that can hold you for long? Greed? Attractions, good foods, good clothes, nice odor, prestige, excitement. These are small things that will not be able to keep you for long. However, to compensate for their lack of quality, they proliferate in quantity. So as we said, U1, U2, U3, U4, the mother U, huh? the U stands for Ugliness. The mother you knows fully well of its deficiency in quality. And to make up for that, it proliferates, it expands in quantity. That obviously is a deception. I know I cannot hold you. That's a law of existence because I am not the real thing. Only the real thing can hold you. So what will I do? I'll create a copy of myself 
with some little apparent deviation the difference between the first and the second copy is superficial but i will present it as fundamental i will say the next choice you are being presented with is something new original and therefore all the grudges that you had with the previous choice will not be found in the new one and for a while the next choice will manage to entertain you but sooner than later you will discover that the next thing is fundamentally just the previous thing but we do not learn our lessons we hop on to u3 with the hope that u3 will bring us a new dawn and again we are disappointed we are disappointed but never disillusioned hope remains hope survives and that's the reason why man has made hope into such a tall virtue otherwise hope is actually a great problem this is what the wise ones have taught this is what vedant tells you you have to come to the end of your hope your hope is your real problem you know what you actually hope for you hope that you can be better remaining who you are your hope is an impossibility yes obviously things can change for you but for things to change for you first of all you have to change for things if you remain to things who you currently are to things how can things change for you things have no capacity to change things are dead things are mere material material cannot change only a conscious entity can change that which is not conscious is called classically by a greatly indicative name jad jad not only means that which is unconscious it also means that which is incapable of changing but when we find that life is bitter to us then instead of changing the conscious one that we are we attempt to change our material surroundings and that's an impossible task the world cannot change the world is jad unconscious you have to change only you have the power the choice the capacity to change but change is anathema to the ego the ego wants to believe that it is already perfect and if it is already perfect why would it change and that's the reason we all avoid change or even if we acquiesce to change it is only fun, only superficial change we agree to so instead of changing within all the energy of humanity is directed at bringing about external change which is an impossibility it is an impossibility yet it can be attempted and we all attempt that and what do we produce in return we produce slightly different versions replicas 
of the same thing. The same thing because remember, the world cannot change. Its forms can. Ice can turn into water, then vapor. Material can take one form, then another. And we believe that by giving more favorable and attractive forms to the material, life would change. But material is just material. Irrespective of the form that you give to it, it cannot improve in its fundamental quality. And its fundamental quality is of unconsciousness. That which is unconscious in itself, how can it raise your own consciousness? And that, mind you, is your fundamental inner demand. It's your need. It's, it's the need you live for. You are the mind, you are consciousness, and you are an imperfect consciousness that seeks perfection. How can the imperfections of consciousness be healed by something that is unconscious in itself? How can the world, the unconscious world, rescue you? But we create optical illusions. We create experiential illusions. And that's the reason why all of us are such suckers for experience. Let me have this, let me have that. Let me enjoy this, let me go there. Let me possess this, let me taste that. Maybe this is what will bring me fulfillment this time. And hope remains. Maybe the next time I will succeed. Maybe the next time I will succeed. And time is limited. So you can remain hopeful all your life and come to your mortal end. Hope is a nice thing, is it not? It helps you to somehow pass away your time. Else life can be a very heavy burden to carry. 80 years can be an infinity. Our self-deception would have almost perfectly succeeded. Had our self cooperated. Our plan is almost fine, but for a little, a little problem. The problem is that the one we are trying to deceive is not merely making up a problem. We repeat its problem is real. And real problems demand real solutions. Not illusions. Not placebos. If you really have a disease, Analgesics cannot be the cure. If you really are troubled, you cannot hope to just sleep over your troubles and wake up to perfection. Can that happen? You need to fight it out like a man. You cannot allow your energy to be dissipated in pursuit of silly options.
You cannot allow yourself nonsensical entertainment in the middle of a life war. Mind you, I did not say all entertainment is nonsensical. And if you are hell-bent on deceiving yourself, then you should not complain of shortening attention spans. How will you convince the mind to falsely testify that it is benefiting from some false treatment. The mind has a real pain. We are all in sorrow. Now try convincing yourself to neglect your sorrow if you can. Try convincing yourself to laugh and jump and smile and giggle and tell everybody you are the happiest man in the world because you have a plethora of options. On your passport, one can see you have visited 64 countries, see so many options. You have 18 girlfriends, see so many options. You have 12 placement offers. So many options. Yes, there is a lot of quantity. But is there even one among these you can really fall in love with? Atma is the name for quality. Hmm? The world is the name for quantity. Now as a young man, you have to decide what is it that you need to go for. Entire Vedanta is a choice between sansara and self, jagat and atma. If quantity will satisfy you, go for the world. And if you come to realize that quantity fails, then go for the truth. That inner truth is called Atma. Thank you, Acharyaji, for the in-depth explanation of our question. Welcome.